Hello everybody, welcome back to the Crumbs and Doilies kitchen here in London. I am here alone because Dane is still recovering from eating that entire double-decker brownie that he made for you guys last week. Uh, he literally didn't share a single piece with Sam or Nikki or anyone else at Crumbs and Doilies in Soho. So it kind of serves him right that he's feeling a little bit sick. <laughs> so I am here today and I'm going to show you how to make something absolutely delicious. We're going to be making some palmiers, which if you don't know what they are, don't know where you've been. They are made out of puff pastry. They're just rolled up with heaps of sugar, so it all caramelizes in the oven. They're really crunchy, they're really Moorish, and they're absolutely delicious, and they're really simple. So I'm gonna be making it with rough puff pastry, which is like a cheats version of puff pastry, but you can also do this with shop-bought pastry, so you don't even need to worry about any of this. I'm gonna put a timestamp in the description box below, so if you wanna buy your pastry, you can pick it up from that time, and that's when we'll be putting all the sugar into the pastry and rolling them up. But I think you should give this pastry a go because it is really easy, um, it's really delicious. You can store it in your freezer as well. I've done a really in-depth video on rough puff pastry, so we'll just whiz through it. I hope you do bake along with me, so let's get started. So in this bowl, I have got 325 grams of plain flour, which is all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna add to it half a teaspoon of salt. We'll just give that a little whiz around and into it I'm gonna add some butter. Now the butter is really, really cold. I've chopped this up quite a long time ago into these little cubes. I've got 250 grams of it and I put it back into the fridge so it's really firm. So we wanna keep this butter cold all the way through. That's how we get good flaky layers in our pastry. If it's too soft, it will kind of mix too much with the flour, it'll become very glutinous and it'll just become one and we don't get those flaky layers. Anyway, I said I'd whiz through it, but I have to give you the tips as we go. So I'm gonna put all of my butter into the flour here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just gonna get our hands in and we're gonna to toss the butter into the flour. So what we're doing here is just coating every single little bit of butter in flour. And next up, we're gonna squish the butter. So we're gonna pick out a bit of butter like this and we're just gonna squish it. So it looks, I don't really know, it just looks like squished butter. I'm not gonna pretend it looks like anything else. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna keep tossing at the same time so that they continue to get coated in flour. So once we've squished all our bits of butter, we're gonna keep kind of doing this action but this time we're kind of breaking them up a little bit and we wanna end up with pieces that are about this kind of big and nice and kind of squished and thin. We don't want to handle it too much, which is why I like to chuck them back in and toss them in the flour between each one. We're just gonna keep going until we get there. So this is such an awesome way of making a cheats puff pastry because puff pastry is really scary. Like even I get scared. I mean, I get scared by a lot of stuff, guys. But puff pastry is super scary. It's very time sensitive. It's very temperature sensitive. And it's one of those things that takes a lot, a lot of practice. So this is such a fab way of getting those real buttery, flaky layers in your pastry that it's really, really easy. So anyway, what I'm left with now is these kind of irregular squished bits of butter all coated in flour and now it is time to kind of bind this together and it looks really weird but come on guys how often do I have to tell you to trust me it's gonna be awesome so I've got some water here which is ice cold I've had it in the fridge for ages now but you could chuck some ice cubes in it and that would get it cold because again we want to keep this cold the whole time so I'm gonna start by making a small well in the center of my bowl and I'm gonna add seven tablespoons of this cold water. We're probably gonna add more, but we don't wanna add too much to begin with. I think this is number four. <laughs> I can't do two things at once. Six, seven, there we go. And then I'm gonna go back in with my hands and again, keep on tossing. So what we're doing now is we're hydrating all that flour so we'd want it to not be kind of dusty and dry anymore. And remember, we don't want to overwork this because overworking your flour starts activating the gluten, which gives us chewy pastry, and that's not what we want. So you can see it is starting to pull together, but it's still very dry. So we are going to add a couple more tablespoons of water. I'm going to go with three. Let's do three. 
So a total of 10, I reckon. Keep on doing our little tossing action. And if we start to squish it, it is starting to hold its shape, right? So what I like to do at this stage is tip it out on the surface. There we go. And I'm going to start to bring it together, not overworking it, and it is feeling quite dry still. So I'm going to sprinkle over another little bit of water. Don't worry, it looks messy, but I mean, it is messy. It's fun messy though. And I always know it's ready when it's starting to stick to my hands like this. This is a good sign. And what we don't want to do is work this into a smooth dough. We want to leave it looking pretty rough and ready. <laughs> we all look a little bit rough and ready sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what I mean by that, sorry. <laughs> right, okay, so I've got my kind of dry, crumbly looking pastry. It's all over my hands. It is time to wrap this in the fridge. And I know this might look really weird and you're thinking, what the goddamn hell have you done? It's gonna be awesome. I've got some cling film here. Sam, come with me, because I can't pick the cling film up because my hands are so sticky. We're gonna pop our pastry on like this and we're gonna wrap it up. I need to get it off my fingers. Let me get it off my fingers. <laughs> Washing your hands, it's so fun. <laughs> Sometimes people say to us like, we never see you wash your hands in your video. Well, it's like, it'd be a pretty boring video if we were constantly <laughs> washing our hands, but for all you that want to know, <laughs> we do wash our hands. <laughs> An awful lot. Okay. So, now that I've got me some clean hands, we can finish wrapping this up. I'm just going to wrap it nice and tight. Now, here we go. This is going to take quite a long time, this pastry, because we need to chill it before we roll it. And we're going to do a total of four rolls with this pastry, because we're going to fold it each time. So I like to do this one the night before, if possible. But if not, two hours before the first roll is perfect. Do not worry. I have prepped for this. So I'm just going to go into the fridge and get one that I made earlier. So you can see it's really, really firm. I'll open it up. <laughs> you can see it a whole lot better. There we go. And just look, you can see all these bits of butter all over it. It's pretty cool, right? It's time to get rolling. So I'm just going to clear up some of that. Now I've got a little bowl of some more flour here, which we're going to lightly dust the surface with. You don't want to go too crazy with the flour because you don't want to incorporate too much more into the dough. And I've got myself a rolling pin as well. i just put a sprinkling of flour on top, a little bit on the pin. Now this first one's going to be quite hard to roll out. It's going to want to crack and that's fine. So we just want to give it a little bit, you can sort of beat it down a bit first <laughs> if you need to. And you can see here, right, like it's already starting to crack. And as we roll this, we don't want to touch it too much. We don't want to warm up the butter too much, but you can manipulate it a little bit as we go. There we go. It's a really nice massage on my arms as well. <laughs> so once you've rolled it out to about dinner plate size, maybe a bit bigger, we're going to do our first fold. And for this one, we're just going to fold it in half twice. So we're going to take the back side, fold it to the front. Now you can see there's quite a lot of flour on here. I'm just going to brush a little bit of that off. And then we'll do the opposite way around. And you can see it's looking a little bit more smooth, can't you? But still looking a little bit kind of crumbly and cracky. That is fine. We're going to do this three more times. So get your cling film back, wrap it back up. 
and then you want to leave this at least half an hour between each kind of roll and fold. Don't worry, I already did it. <laughs> I've got stage two right here. So we can just crack straight on. So again, a little bit more flour and get rolling. So if I was making a pie, I'd keep doing the same fold, so folding it into a nice little square each time. But for this, we want to end up with a rectangle. So at this stage, this is where we start forming that shape. So I'm going to start rolling it out in a rectangle like this. We'll just keep going. And you can see that this is looking a lot smoother, a lot more like pastry. Okay, so now we're going to do a different type of fold. You've probably seen this one being done before. I think it's called the, the letter fold or something like that. We're going to take one end, fold it a third of the way and take the other one and wrap it over the top like that. So then we've got a nice rectangle to work with. And you guessed right, guys, we're going back into the fridge to grab stage four. Is it stage four already? I'm not so sure. We've done two folds now. Sign me up to Blue Peter. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing with this one. Roll it out into the rectangle and do the same kind of fold. Okay, so again we'll do that same fold. So in thirds. and get rid of some of that flour. And now I like to try and make it a little bit neat from here on out. So I've got my sharp knife here and I'm just going to trim off some of the raggedy edges here just to give us a fighting chance of keeping this in shape. And then we'll just rewrap him. So that's fold number three done. And fold number four is my favorite one. Because now it is time to start adding the sugar. And I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a hell of a lot of sugar. But that's what makes these so delicious because all that sugar caramelizes in the oven and it is absolutely amazing. So I've got caster sugar here and I would recommend caster sugar rather than granulated sugar but if you can only get granulated then still make these. You have to make these. So I'm going to start rolling this out again but this time incorporating loads of sugar. So we're just going to keep on adding it. And we want to go for that same shape again, that kind of long rectangle. So once I'm about halfway, I'm actually going to flip this over so that we can add sugar to the other side, obviously. Just keep on rolling. And now you're having a kind of an exfoliated <laughs> massage now. <laughs> okay, so the final fold in thirds as before. There we go. And again, just trying to neaten it up a little bit. And this one's just going to go in the fridge 
for about 20 minutes this time. By now your pastry will be nice and cold. And we don't want to put the sugar in the fridge for too long because it will start to kind of, you know, get a little bit moist from the pastry and from the kind of moisture in the fridge as well. So we'll just whack it in just to kind of maintain its coldness more than anything. I don't have one of these waiting, so I will see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> So now it is time to roll again, but to roll into our palmier shapes. So again, we're going to keep going with the sugar. More sugar. Why not? And we want to keep the kind of long rectangle going. Now before we start shaping, I'm just going to neaten this up. So I'm just going to run my knife down all the sides, just trimming off the sort of raggy bits. Now you can save these little bits because I quite like to put these back in the fridge and then use them as my baking test. If you're not quite sure about your oven temperature, you can set it and then bake these off and see how they look. So before we roll, just gonna put a bit more sugar in. <laughs> and now what we're gonna do, first of all, is find the middle. So I'm gonna fold in half, just so we've got a middle mark here. And then we're going to fold each side once and then twice into the centre. And you can see I've left a little bit of a kind of tunnel in the centre here, there. And that's just so that we can then flip it in half. And that is our basic palmier roll. So you can see here, it's all rolled up like that. Now again, I like to just pop this back in the fridge just because we've been handling it. We want to make sure we bake it from really cold so it goes from cold into the hot oven. As you can see, <laughs> I'm just applying a little bit more sugar to the outside and then I'm just going to wrap this up, pop him back in for about 15 minutes just whilst I get my oven preheated. So I'm going to pop my oven on now to 200 degrees C which is fan assisted. Remember to check the description box along with the ingredients you've got your oven conversions too in case you haven't got a fan. So I'm going to pop this in, get the oven on and I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Okay, let's get going. Let's bake some of these off. So this is nice and firm now, nice and easy to handle. And I'm going to start by just chopping a little slice off the end just to neaten it up. And there, look. Pretty cool, right? And I'm going to chop these about one centimetre. So you want to use a sharp knife for this if you can. And I've got myself a nice big baking sheet here. If you can't fit all of these in your oven at once, I just chop off a few at a time and leave the, the bulk of it in the fridge. And then I'm going to take each one, let me turn it around this way for you. I'm just going to open them up slightly, but only this much because remember it's puffed, so it's going to puff up in the oven and that's when you'll get its shape. Classic me, I've got one too many. Right, so these are going to go into the oven and now what we need to do is put them in for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'll be with you to check them because at that stage we're going to flip them over really carefully because remember they're covered in sugar so they're going to be super hot and I am living breathing proof. I flipped one the other day and burnt my thumb. Um, so we're going to do that really carefully and then we're going to bake the other half for another kind of five to ten minutes. So let's go in and we'll check them after ten minutes. Ok, 
Okay, so now it is time to flip. So you want to check that these are the right colour. So we're going to flip one over and do not do this with your fingers. Please be careful. I'm using a large palette knife here, sliding it underneath and flipping it like that. And you can see it's gone lovely and kind of caramelised and crispy around here. It's starting to look really golden. And these are looking perfect. So we're going to flip every single one and then return them to the oven for another kind of five to ten minutes until they're golden brown all over the top. How beautiful are our little palm ears. I'm going to snap it in half, ready? <laughs> that was a wicked snap. And can you see our flaky layers here? This is going to be absolutely delicious. And the caramelization of the sugar all around the outside. It's going to be sticky, crispy, absolutely delicious. Mmm. Mmm. So amazing. Mmm. I love them. Did you hear how crunchy it was? They're sweet, but they've got that real, real buttery, kind of melt in your mouth kind of feeling from the rough puff pastry. They just look so gorgeous. And they were pretty simple, right? Even if you don't make the rough puff, you can just buy your own pastry, roll them out, put heaps of sugar in them, and you'll have these perfect little palm ears. I keep holding this one up. I can hold this one up. This is perfect. Because <laughs> I've not demolished it. And I know I was kind of rude about Dane eating that entire double-decker brownie, but I think I'm probably going to eat all of these. Sorry, Nikki has given me the evils. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that was wicked. So I hope you really enjoy this. And I really hope you do give it a go and do give that kind of rough puff a go as well because it's a lot easier than you might think. So you'll find the description, uh, the ingredients, sorry, in the description box below. Um, and make sure that you have subscribed to our channel so that you get all our recipes and you'll get notifications every time we upload if you click the little bell next to the subscribe button too. And if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up um, and share it around too. And if you want to see some more kind of um, pastry recipes, we've got a couple of pies um, on the channel as well. If you want something a little bit more back to basics, a little bit simple, a little bit calmer, then we started with a kind of mindful baking series. Um, we've done the shortbread um, and we've done some crumble bars as well. So we'll be adding to that and I'll put a link to that playlist. Uh, it's really cool, it's really exciting and I'm really enjoying going back to the basics with you guys. So keep letting us know what you want to see on the channel, share your photos with us over on Instagram. I'll put the kind of tags, handles, whatever the kids call them, on the screen now so you can see what the guys are up to. I'm trying to get all the words out as quickly as I can so that I can do this. Mm. See you later, guys. 